Hello, welcome. Thank you all for coming and thank you for watching if you're at home. My name's Kate Frisbee. I teach public speaking here at Essex High School and it is my all-time favorite class to teach, I have to say. Um, I try not to tell my sophomores that, but it is so much fun to get to meet kids and learn so much about them and hear about their lives and, and let them write about things they want to write about and research things they want to research. And it's very self-driven. And one of the buzzwords you hear a lot in education right now is authenticity and you know authentic assessments. And it doesn't get more authentic than this. So thank you so much for coming. Uh, you are the first group since COVID that we've allowed to have parents in the building the last couple uh, semesters. We've had to just live stream, which was, was nice, but this, this takes it to another level. And for the whole semester, these kids have been practicing in front of the same 18 kids. So they've gotten a little comfortable, and now they're really uncomfortable. So I thank you for being part of you know, what's gonna make them uncomfortable. <laughs> so they were asked to pick somebody in their life that they wanted to honor. And uh, it could be somebody they have day-to-day -day contact with. It could be somebody they just met. Um, it could be a deceased you know, member of their life. And so we have a range of people from you know, younger siblings to deceased grandparents. And it's really nice to hear these tributes. They're short. I tell the kids this is like the toast you're going to give it when you're a best man or a maid of honor. So, you know, you're going to be in a facility with no podium. They're going to give you a microphone, a glass of champagne, and an index, and you're going to have an index card, and you're going to be trying to hold all three. And um, that's what we're trying to replicate so that we can prepare them to have to do this in real life, because hopefully they will. Um, so that's really all I have to add. Um, we're going to start with Cade. He volunteered to be first, which is really brave, and he does that a lot. So it's all you. <laughs> Hello everyone, and thank you for coming. What does Pi, uh, divorce, and summer school have in common? My grandmother who helped me through all of it. My grandmother has been a huge part of my life ever since I was a child. And today I'll be telling you why my grandmother, Kathy Armstrong, uh, who I call Nani, has been such a big part of my life. My favorite activity to do with her when I was young was to cook pie. Um, it was, I enjoyed it so much because of how relaxed it was. We almost never followed a recipe and almost never measure it. If, ever, if the ba berries were ever too uh, sour, we would just add more sugar to it. And because of that, to this day, pie is one of my favorite desserts. She didn't just help me get through the uh, easy times, she helped me get through the hard times too. When I was in second grade, my grandmother picked me up after school and told me that I would be spending the afternoon with her. Uh, this is because my mother was divorcing my stepfather and she wanted to shield me from some of that. So we went to a whole bunch of uh, Vermont parks. Unfortunately, she didn't really know how to work her GPS, so we ended up fiddling with that the entire time and trying to get to, from park to park and eventually home. The first park we went to was St. Albans Town Park, which was fun, but the shoreline was made out of big boulders, so we couldn't actually go down by there. But it was still a good bonding experience because of all the activities and fun things there. Next, we went to Kilcare State Park which had a shoreline of slate and other flat stones, so we could skip stones. And even though I'm terrible and was then too at skipping stones, it was a good bonding experience to have her teach me how to skip stones. It was also fun to look, at the, look out at the lake and watch the boats with her. Her supporting me has helped our bond grow really strong. Another example of her supporting me was what she called Nani Camp. When I was uh, young, I had a lot of trouble with school and was super frustrated. And so she volunteered to, to help, uh, help me through that. And it is more than obvious now that that was super effective, in part because of how she motivated me. Anytime I didn't want to work, she would threaten that I would become a garbage truck driver. And even though now I know that they make decent money, at the time it was pretty scary. And so she helped me a lot um, with school too, but I, I was also able to do other fun things 
while there, such as making pie, as I mentioned earlier, and also helping in the garden and just doing fun things around there. And this taught me to persevere through the hard parts to enjoy the fun things in life. I know I can always rely on her um, to be there for me, as shown by how she supported me when I was a child, but also how, but also now, she's, o she's always there to talk honestly with me and come to things like sporting events and other big parts of my life. She has been a big part of my, my entire life, and so I want to say one last thing. Thank you so much, Nani, for, yeah, thank you. <laughs> My name is Lily, and tonight I would like to tell all of you about my amazing mother, Patricia Schechter. Oh my gosh, that slide actually says joy, doesn't it? Well, my mom was actually named Patricia last minute in the hospital after a nurse that looked after her when she was a baby. Her middle name is Joy, but I've always felt that it suits her a lot better, given how much joy she brings into everyone's life. Okay, puns aside. Um, I think that my mom is one of the most amazing humans on the planet because she has an incredible work ethic, she will always stand up for me, and she's incredibly generous. Tonight I'm going to share a couple of stories that I hope exemplify what an amazing person she is. I'd like to start by talking about some of the challenges that she's gone through in her life, starting with her upbringing. My mom grew up in suburban Canada in a family that was below the poverty line. She's told me stories about nights that they didn't eat dinner because they couldn't afford it. She also had an alcoholic father who was often violent towards her older brothers. And when my mom was 15, her mother actually walked out on their family. My mom got married at 19 and moved out of the house and began to support herself financially. Like, can you imagine supporting yourself entirely at 19? She worked incredibly hard for that. She had lots and lots of jobs. She worked at department stores, she worked for the post office, and finally she found her passion, which was nursing. Then, in 1998, she picked up and moved out of Canada and came to the US. Here, she was once again a nurse, and she actually quickly began to climb the ladder into leadership. And then she got her master's degree, actually, in nurse management, which made her the first of her four siblings to get a college degree. And that's an achievement that she holds dearly to her heart. I consider my mom a perfect example of the American dream. She started with little, came to the US, and worked really hard to achieve a life that she's proud of. Another amazing thing about my mom is the way she will always, always stand up for me. I, since childhood, have been going to this sleepaway camp called Camp Hashaliga, and I love it there, it's amazing. But there was this one summer where I was really anxious about sleeping away from home. I was very nervous, and my mom made this arrangement with the camp director that I could call home every night so that I would feel safer. Well, that didn't exactly work out. The first night of camp, they did not let me call home and I did not sleep the whole night. I was so stressed and anxious and worried the whole night. And I wrote her a letter, because that's what I was allowed to do. I wrote her a letter about how I was, like, felt so embarrassed that I needed help. And not everyone knows this about my mom, but she's part Irish and she has that like classic temper. And so when I tell you that she lost her Irish on the camp director that morning, I'm not kidding. Um, it was probably one of the most validating experiences for me because she wasn't embarrassed to be making a scene. She was not ashamed that I needed help at that time. She only cared about making me feel safe and comfortable. And so when I finally got to call her that night, I was really happy and it really is valuable to me. Lastly, I would like to share about how amazingly generous my mom is. My mom is a quilter. And so she'll spend sometimes two to three years working on these quilts. She cuts every piece perfectly. She makes the corners line up. She sews them all together. She pours her heart and soul into all of these quilts. And then when she finishes, she gives them all away. Pretty much every time. She gives them to me, to my dad, to our family, her friends, everyone except herself. And she just, she just loves giving that much. And I feel like that's really rare to find. Um, another story about how generous she is. I would like to share how she's so generous with her time. Recently in these past couple of months, one of our elderly neighbors, her name is Wanda, and her husband has been in and out of the hospital. 
And since my mom's a nurse, she's in a position where she's able to give really good advice and support to Wanda to sort of help her through this time. And so my mom has been going over to Wanda's house very often after work in the evening to have a cup of tea with her and sit down and support her and her family as they're going through this difficult time. And I'll admit, I'm not the biggest fan of this arrangement because I'm like, come hang out with me when you get home from work. But um, my mom constantly reminds me that Wanda is in need of help and support right now. And we need to be generous with our time and generous with our love to help her. My mom is generous with quilts. She's generous with her time. But most of all, she's generous with love. She walks through life and it just pours off her. She gives it to everyone she meets and it draws people to her. So my mom has an amazing work ethic. She will always stand up for me and most of all, she's incredibly generous. I hope that as you're walking through your life someday, you can receive some of the love that she gives out into the world and some of the joy. Thank you so much. And next we have Ella. Hi, I'm Ella Weidman. Growing up, people would often tell me, you're a stubborn thing, or you'd make a good lawyer. I wonder where you got that from. Eyes turned toward my mom. <laughs> My mom, the strong, graceful woman who showed me kindness always, who taught me and showed me the world, and someone who has helped me in so many ways to where I stand today. And today I'd like to share with you this amazing woman. So when I was young, my mom got really clever. One of the things that she told my older brother and I is that when the ice cream truck plays music, that means they're out. For anyone who doesn't know, that's not true. <laughs> and it wasn't until later on a family vacation where my stepdad said, hey, let's get some ice cream. And my brother stood there plainly and said, but the music's playing, they're out. We all stood there staring at each other until we erupted into laughter and we still get a good laugh out of stories just like that today. It was moments like this that I realized how smart and creative my mom is, and I will be using that as a parent, yes. And I've also learned good money management from my mom, yes, um, but in more ways than just that. Um, she is the person who helped me set up my first bank account, helped me get my first job, and fun fact, I am a master clearance shopper. <laughs> and not only has she taught me about responsible spending, but she's taught me about self-worth and strength and work, eth work ethic. One year for Christmas, my mom got me this jar. It was a jar that she decorated, put together, put little notes inside with affirmations, brain breaks, creative outlets, reasons that she's proud of me, that I'm able to look into whenever I'm nervous or anxious, like right now, and <laughs> I'm able to be refreshed in my mindset. It's a way that she shows that she cares and she wants me to grow in a healthy way. She takes the time and she checks in on you, even when you don't want to be checked in on and you're completely fine. <laughs> and it's things like this where she has shown me how to be my best and she motivates me to be my best, artistically, physically, mentally, academically. And sure, she's given me life, but she's also given me siblings. Um, who I've learned a lot from. Uh, for example, my little siblings. Uh, they were born when I was 15 and 13 years old. <laughs> and I have learned so much from them, even though they're young. Uh, for instance, uh, my little sister loves to dance. She's taught me so many dance moves. And I remember the first moment that I found out I was going to have a little sister. I was 12 years old and it was February, and my brother and I got to open a present. We were very confused by this. It was not a birthday or a holiday, um, but inside was a onesie. I got so excited, and my brother got so confused. It was great. And then uh, my little sister was born, and because of her, I've learned about the joys of diaper changing and yelling for fun and just the little things in life that 
make so much joy. I learned how much you can love another person. And sure, my mom and I have butted heads plenty of time. Who hasn't? But thanks to my mom, I have learned respectful, open, sympathetic relationships and how to deal with them. And this is my last year, or la next year is my last year in high school. And going on into the future, I will know how to hold myself, talk to people, find new relationships, communicate better. And I'm so thankful for it. And as much as I probably don't say it enough, I'm so appreciative of everything she does for my family and me. I hope for a lifetime full of stubborn conversations, accidentally wearing the same outfit moments, and my stepdad saying, okay, Kim Jr., <laughs> thank you, and have a fantastic night. Greetings, friends and family of these wonderful public speaking students. Uh, I'm Madison Terman, and I want you to just think for a moment, who was it that made you who you are today? For a lot of you, that's probably a parent, maybe a grandparent, a best friend, uh, and that's no different for me. For our final assignment in this class, I needed to choose somebody to tribute, someone who has changed me and helped do something unmatched to impact who I am. And that's why this speech is dedicated to the most wonderful woman I know, my best friend, my grandmother, my Oma, Carol Farmer. Today, I would like to show you why she is so important to me and how she has shaped me to be the woman that I am today. Thanksgiving, that's always been a wonderful time of the year for my family. Every year we go up and we have some of my Oma's mouth-watering food that all of my family enjoys. And whenever I was there and I was little, she would take me to this place she called her secret room. The secret room was filled with all kinds of wool, the softest wool you had ever touched, and the most gorgeous felt creations you had ever seen. Whenever I was there, she would let me leave with big bulky bags filled with whatever colors I wanted to make with whatever came to mind. I remember we would sit down at the table and she would show me how felting worked, poking away at the felt that was on there. And during the holidays, uh, no matter what lovely gift she may give me, one of my favorite things is her holiday cards. They're all handmade and she puts so much effort into them. And I'm sure my family loves it just as much as I do. And now, not only has my Oma uh, impacted my creative life, but also my scientific life. Uh, when I was 12 years old, I was obsessed with astronomy, as I'm sure most 12-year-olds end up doing. Uh, that's why my Oma planned a trip to the Fairbanks Museum, and that had the planetarium that 12-year-old me really, really, really wanted to see. So I remember going in there with my Oma, uh, and I was so in awe of how the planets moved, how stars made constellations, so much so that even today I remember how to navigate my way around using only the stars. My Oma truly was the person that introduced me to the wonderful world of science. And if it weren't for that Neil deGrasse Tyson book that she gifted me in 2017, I don't think I'd be where I am today. I mean, I've read over five books of his, all pretty great. My Oma has not only impacted my career as a student, but also my career as a future woman in STEM. One of the things that I feel like connect me and my Oma the most is how politically charged we are. A while ago, she uh, went to a women's march in Washington, DC. and. For her to continue fighting for what she believes in even now is one of the most inspiring things every single day. I wake up and I try to put a little bit of her spark in me to get through. And that spark has never failed me. That spark is what got me a job at a museum. It's what got me uh, an interview on television. And it's what got me the courage to take a class that near 80% of Americans are too anxious to take. When I was assigned this speech, choosing my person came easy. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, I love you, mom and dad, but let's be honest, I have a very special place in my heart for my Oma. Ever since I was little, she has impacted me. From choosing who I want to send my little felt creations to, to helping decide my future college, 
It truly is a privilege to have a woman like her in my life. And I am so thankful that she is sitting with us here today. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Sometimes all it takes is another person's point of view to see the best aspects of yourself. While we don't notice our own day-to-day -day kindness, other people do. Tonight, I'm here to honor Maisie, my younger sister. Her empathy, kindness, and perseverance are all incredibly admirable, along with her surprising emotional maturity for just being 10. I hope in these three stories I'm about to tell you, you begin to see these qualities in Maisie just as I do. Firstly is her empathy. Maisie will always be the first person to put herself in someone else's shoes or try and see solutions from a different angle. This was really exemplified about a month ago with Maisie's teacher. Maisie's teacher was having a rough day. She had just had to put down her beloved pet horse, Chloe, and unexpectedly too. During class, the teacher broke down in tears. Now, as a little kid, seeing a teacher cry is scary. It's like seeing a parent cry. This is an adult who's supposed to be responsible, who's supposed to be older than you, and you don't know what to do. Most kids would have just stared or turned their backs and left the room, but not Maisie. Maisie went over to the teacher and told her it was going to be okay. After all, Maisie had lost a pet too, two cats, and even if she cried, she would eventually feel better. The tears would eventually stop. Later in the day, the teacher emailed us, thanking Maisie for her compassion and kindness, and also showed, a hand, showed some handwritten sentences in a photo of Chloe, both done by Maisie. Not, empathy needs kindness, and luckily Maisie has plenty of that too. Whether it always be saying, thank you, this is delicious, after having a home-cooked meal, or always coming over to compliment a drawing I'm working on, Maisie has no shortage of kind words. An example of one of these was when I was having some design problems. I had been tasked to make four logos for a local sports team, and while they were looking all right, I think I was having some problems. Something about the design, the color, the lines, just wasn't working for me. I was getting a little frustrated when Maisie came over and asked to see them. I was expecting a meh reaction, or no reaction at all when I showed her the drawings. Instead, she said they were super cool, super cute, and very awesome. It was those little words of encouragement that allowed me to rework and redesign some of the drawings into something I was super proud of. And even if she doesn't realize it, those little words can have a huge impact on people's lives. Additionally, Maisie is incredibly perseverant and faces the most difficult situations with unbridled optimism. Maisie, this is exemplified in Maisie's work at school. Maisie has dyslexia, which means she has trouble keeping up reading and writing at a grade level. But that doesn't stop her. Even if it can be disheartening and a little unfortunate at times, she always approaches learning with a can-do attitude. For example, she gets up at 6.30 every morning and goes to school an hour early just to get some extra help. I don't know any fifth grader who would want to do this, and I don't even know if Maisie does, but every day she faces it with a smile and a can-do attitude, which is truly admirable, especially when contrasting this to myself. In middle school, I had a lot of trouble with math and science. I just didn't get it. And even if I was offered help from teachers, from peers, a packet to do at home, some words with parents, I never wanted to do it. This extra help, I just decided no. I threw up my hands in defeat and said math and science would never be for me. Ironically, I'm trying to go to college to pursue a master's in chemistry. I only wonder what could have been different if I would have had the same mindset as Maisie. While brief, I do hope these stories have shown you some of Maisie's best traits. Now do keep in mind, we are still siblings. It's not all sunshine and rainbows, and the annoying younger sister is still a constant. Regardless of that, I still love her. Her empathy, kindness, perseverance, and surprising emotional maturity are all super admirable traits, and I'm very proud of her. Even if she did decide to go and tell her entire class that I ate children, which is certainly something, Please, do note I said emotional maturity. <laughs> I want to thank Maisie for allowing me to give this speech tonight, and I want to thank all of you, the audience, for listening. Please, have a good night.
next we have Andrew. Hello, everybody. While my grandfather would love to be up here speaking to you all today, as he was a preacher uh, in his church at Moscow Stowe uh, for 35 years, um, well, for me, I'm just a nervous, nervous train wreck. While my grandfather was a great speaker, it was really the actions uh, he showed that helped me grow to love and respect the person he was. Living together with grandparents is, has its ups and downs. Um, for me, there was a lot of ups, though, and that I'm very grateful for. For a lot of people, they have to travel hours uh, to just see grandparents. Parents. So for me, I'm very grateful that all I had to do was take a couple steps and, and I was in their apartment. We shared a lot of memories together um, in the 10 years, 10 plus years that we lived together. A lot of those having to do with soccer, uh, as that's the sport I've grown up playing. Um, I remember the last game they went to before COVID um, was a game at Mount Mansfield um, that we won 1-0. And I remember him walking over um, cane in his hand, uh, hobbling over, and he just, with the biggest smile on his face, congratulates all my teammates. Um, and that was really just the person he was. Um, he was the kindest, sweetest, uh, just had the biggest heart, and um, he's made a very big impact on me and my life. Well, he was uh, the incredible person he was, uh, he also uh, had a lot of great uh, leadership qualities. As I said uh, earlier, he led his church for 35 years. Um, I, remember in, I remember in his dying days, um, uh, I remember my dad calling me over to their, their side apartment, and I remember my dad telling me that uh, he was going to say a prayer for me, and it was a prayer of blessing, and that there was uh, many uh, prayers of blessings in the Bible, um, and that he was going to say one to me that night. As I walked over there and knelt by his side, uh, I remember him grabbing my hand, and I don't remember the exact words, but I remember him telling me that he was sharing a prayer of blessing for me and for a blessing upon my life. And I remember uh, watching my grandfather break down into tears um, as he held my hand, and I, I just remember thinking back to it now. He said his final prayer to me, and it really just made the, it had the biggest impact on me, and I will forever cherish that memory. Now, while grief is never easy, feeling grief just shows how much we care for the people we lose. Um, when, I, when I think about that, I, I think, uh, like, there was many times where I've struggled um, with losing my grandparents, um, especially my grandfather, as he's had such a big, big impact on me. Um, and I just really try and uh, model my life off of the person he was, the kind-hearted, um, sweet, open, just cared about everyone, honestly. Um, from the bankers in his bank, he knew all of them by name, to the people who made his sandwiches, um, Dunkin' Donuts workers, he just had the biggest heart and cared. Um, now, while grief is never easy, feeling the grief just shows how much we care for the people we lose. Um, and when I think about this, I think, I, I wish he was here tonight, but I know he's up in heaven um, looking down on me, proud. Thank you very much. Excellent. All right, and we have Paige next. Hello, everyone. I'm Paige. So whenever there's something on my mind, whether it's the boring little details of my day, or my latest teenage crisis, or something exciting that I have to share, there's always one person that I go to to tell that thing to, and that's my mom. Tonight, I'm going to honor my mom, who's always there for me, always inspiring me, and always willing to do anything for my family. 
The stories I tell tonight will highlight some of her amazing qualities through what she does for me and those around her. It was very hard to choose just three stories because I have many that I could tell. When I was in seventh grade, uh, me and my friends were goofing off on some ice and I slipped and fell and broke my wrist. And the problem is that it was three days before Christmas. Now, I didn't even cry when I actually broke my wrist because everyone was laughing, so I had to just play it off cool, like it didn't hurt. But when I found out that I was gonna be in a cast for Christmas, that was devastating. And I bawled my eyes out, even as a 13-year-old girl. Um, but I was just so bummed that I'd be opening presents in a sling and it was just a mess. But my mom made some phone calls, worked what I like to call her mama bear magic, and she got me an appointment right before Christmas to get a hard cast. So I got to make it red and green and festive. And then I was, you know, things were looking a little better, but then Christmas Eve came and we got our pajamas that we always get. It's a tradition in our family to always get Christmas Eve pajamas. And of course it didn't fit over my cast. So cue the tears again, I was miserable. But my mom was already to the rescue. She found a red shirt that somehow fit over my cast and she pulled out this little strand of lights that I don't even know where she would have gotten them. And she wrapped my cast in lights and made it so festive. Um, and it was something that, it shouldn't have really been that big of a deal at the time, you know? It was like, it wasn't the end of the world, I was in a cast. But my mom knew that I was really upset and she rushed in with a fix because she always just has a fix for everything. My mom is a giver. She loves to serve, she loves to help others whenever she can. She's a Christian, a mother, and a nurse, so she's always ready to help people. And I just remember there was this guy, he used to always bike ride past our house. And no matter what time of year it was, in the middle of winter, he'd be bike riding. And he didn't have a winter coat or anything like that. And so we know how cold Vermont winters can get. And my mom, when she saw this man, she did not hesitate to buy him a jacket, a hat, gloves, a whole new winter wardrobe. And she brought it and she asked me one morning if I wanted to go deliver it with her. So we got up really, really early in the morning before the sun was even up and we drove to deliver this man his jacket. And it was super fun. It was kind of like a sneaky little spy mission, being kind. And I had a lot of fun. And my family knows I'm big on credit. I like to get the credit for things. I like to know, I like people to know when I've done something. But my mom showed me the value of being kind without recognition. And I find it so rewarding now. One of my favorite qualities about my mom is her fun and her spontaneity. Uh, she's always just making life exciting because she's so spontaneous. It's how we ended up with a puppy. It's how quarantine was so unforgettable. And it's how one time we were on a trip in Florida when I was in sixth grade. And we had one day left before we got on the plane. And so we were just gonna drive, shop around, kinda hang out. So we all piled into the car. And then my mom just decided to turn into Disney World. And I just remember her words, they were so casual. She's like, oops, guys, I think I just made a wrong turn. It looks like we have to go to Disney World now. And we all just had such a fun day at Disney World. And she told us later that she really had no intentions of taking us to Disney World that trip. We'd already been before, we'd already done a week of fun things, but she just wanted to have a, let us have a good time and be spontaneous. There are so many stories that I could tell about my mom, but these are just a few that came to mind. She's the first person that I go to for everything because I can always trust her advice. She knows me better than I know myself. She works endlessly to make sure that my siblings and I are all happy and loved and cared for. She taught us to love each other, to have each other's backs, to work hard and to serve others. Her belief in her kids is so strong that I truly believe that I could do absolutely anything I put my mind to. She always puts everyone's needs before her own without ever expecting a thank you and often not getting one but my whole world would fall apart without her. If I can be half as good of a mom as she is, then my future kids will be really, really lucky. So thank you for all that you do. I love you, Mommy. All right, next we have Matt. Good evening, everyone. Being close with someone is not something everyone has, and I'm lucky to say the person I'm special to in this world is my mom. It isn't, if it wasn't for my mom, I would not appreciate how important it is to spend time with people that you love and how special it is to take, um, take good care of people when they need it. 
The first story I'm going to tell you about is when I went to the Red Sox game with my mom the second time. You may be asking, why am I not talking about the first time? I'm talking about, I'm talking about the second time is because I was older and I feel like the experiences I got to um, do with my mom uh, was more mature and I could understand them more. So on the way down to Boston, uh, we were going to a game in October 2016, and they were playing the Blue Jays, and I was so excited because I'm a big Red Sox fan, and I was really excited to go to the game. And I kept, I remember I keep telling my mom that uh, I'm so close to David Ortiz right now, like I'm super excited, and um, I just wanted to get to the ballpark. So we arrived there, and the first thing I wanted to do was get a hot dog, hot dog, and watch the the guys hit um, BP, which is batting practice um, and I was so excited and then the game started uh, Red Sox started off hot and got a couple runs in and I, I remember telling my mom oh, the Red Sox got this win in already and my mom I remember this very vividly she told me Matt don't count your chickens before they hatch and I was like oh, okay I don't really know what that means but um, believe it or not she was right at the end of the game the Blue Jays ended up winning which you know was unfortunate but uh, still really enjoyed the game, and it was an amazing experience. Later that morning, because we spent the night in Boston, uh, I had a baseball game the next day in, I think, Montpelier. And we had to get back quickly. But we wanted to get breakfast, and I remember we had nowhere to go, but we found a spot called Press Cafe, which neither of us had been to. Um, and now, since then, that's the only, and whenever we go to the Boston area, we go there, because we had never been there before, and we enjoyed it so much. And that's a very special memory I've had with her. Another story I want to tell you about is the 10-11 All-Star season I had in Little League Baseball. So every year in All-Stars, there's a new location that your district gets to play at for playdowns. And that year was in Enosburg. So you had to drive out there for a game. And my mom was very um, happy to bring all my friends out to the game, to carpool to the games. And my friends loved it. My friends um, always loved being with my mom and me because she would always, plays the, always, play, always would play the best music and I'll get the boys hyped up before the games. That really made my relationship with my friends and my mom closer that season because how much my, my friends loved her and how much I, she meant to me. At the end of the season, my mom became so close to my friends, my friends made a nickname for her, which is Mama T. And they call her to, that to this day, as my friend Cam calls her to that. The final story I'm fortunate, to, I'm fortunate to tell you guys is constant reminders she gives me. As you know, uh, high school you only get to do once, and she constantly reminds me that how important grades are and how important you do in high school is, uh, affects your future. Even now, this week, midterm week, very important week in high school, she gives me reminders to study hard and get ready for the tests because your grades matter and she knows how important my future is and she wants the best for me. She gives me these reminders, she gives me these reminders because she knows that what I want in my future, I don't know what college I want to go to and the grades that I get now are gonna open the doors in my future. I just wanna say how thankful I am to have my mom and how special she is, how special she is to me. Thank you. Sage Jewel, and when I was told that we were going to have to pick someone to tribute a speech to, one person came to mind immediately. My dad. Sorry, Mom. Uh, when, um, when I think of my father, I think of the quote that he tries to live by. Life is 10% what happens to you, and 90% how you react to it. I think this um, reflects and has greatly impacted his mindset as he goes about life. He has greatly influenced me and shown me the type of person that I want to become someone who is patient and empathetic, someone who others can rely upon for strength when they need it. And I like to think that my father has many stories and life experiences that he can share. I, when I was younger, I had an obsession with horses. 
And she had one story that remotely involved horses. And for the next few years, I clung on to that story. And I would ask him to tell it again and again and again. I can't imagine how annoying it must have been from his perspective to have so many more important life lessons, but have his only daughter ask to tell a horse story. But I'm thankful for the patience that he showed me in that moment, as it was not only in that moment, but in many other areas of life that his patience carried over to, whether it be schoolwork, normal work, or just life. Whenever I came to something, whenever I came to him for something, whether I'd already come uh, with it before him, uh, he would always help me again. Um, I like to think that I inherited some of that patience from him. People always tell me that me and my mom look similar, and I agree. If you look at photos of her when she was young and me now, we do look very similar. And I always think that it saddens my dad a little bit that we never physically resembled each other. But at the end of the day, it's okay, because mentally, we are very similar. Uh, my dad has always been this very chill, cool, laid-back guy, we, and we later learned that that chilledness was ADHD. When I received the diagnosis that I had ADHD, I let it influence me more than I should have. I let it influence the way I saw myself and my self-worth, which is why I was thankful for, such a, for how strong he was, because whenever I'd get down on myself, I was always able to look at him and think, no, it, is not, it does not determine who I can become in my future. Um, and that ADHD that we share has allowed us to have a deeper connection as there are definitely times when I feel more confident to go to him with things and there've been more than a few occasions when we have decided to keep something between us until we are more confident so we can tell mom. For example, when I was in 12, we went to Stowe for a soccer tournament. It was in between games and so we, were at, so we were at a friend's house and me and my teammates were playing hide and seek. I took off running down a hallway flung a door open and went charging through it without looking. I later learned that that doorway led to the basement. I ended up tripping down the stairs. Um, my, one of my teammates found me not even a minute later. She got her older sister who got her dad. After making sure that I was generally okay other than the fact that I just face planted down the stairs, he led me upstairs. My friend's dad led me upstairs. And I still remember very distinctly that tone he used of like, oh my God, when he said Todd, and seeing my dad turn around. I'm pretty sure he swore, but my dad says he didn't. Thankfully, one of the parents there was a doctor. So after, so after, so we ended up telling my dad that I would most likely need stitches. So my dad packed me and my brother up into the car. But right before we left, he told everyone, do not tell Joanne, do not tell her mother, let me. I had not understood the gravity of the situation and was just excited to sit up front. And I didn't understand as what, why he kept on telling me, if you're sleepy, tell me. Don't go to sleep, okay? The injury wasn't that bad. He was just freaking out. When we later arrived at urgent care and got checked in, he finally took a photo of my face and sent it to my mom. Um, I did end up getting two to three stitches right below my eyebrow that day. And I am extremely thankful for his calm demeanor as I would have reacted based on how he reacted, but since he was so calm, I figured everything's okay. It's okay, nothing's wrong. Um, in the beginning of the speech, I told you that he li tries to live by the quote, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. Looking back on the past 17 years of my life, I can see now he has been trying to instill that mindset in me and I am extremely grateful for the both mental and physical support that he has given me, trying to prepare me for my future. Thank you, Dad. Thanks, so. thank you. Next, we have Tekla. I have a. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. A lot of you people in this audience tonight are parents. And I'm not sure when you decided when, what you're going to name your child, but my mother, Tracy Holm, knew that she wanted a daughter named Tekla ever since she was a little girl. Which is a very unique and strong name in her opinion. Unfortunately, she had my brother first and had to scramble to find a boy's name, but luckily I came second and I was able to make that dream come true for her. But I think I'm still the luckier one because my mother is an incredibly important person to me. 
Tonight I'll be telling you how we communicate a little bit differently than most, her dedication to cataloging all of our family's memories, and how much she taught me about being a Vermonter. And my family loves movies and TV shows, as most do. But we quote movies and shows constantly, which I think is a little different than most, because I have been told many times by my friends, that, how do you remember that? You remember too much for movies. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that we're unique on this front. Just for instance, when my mom when we were going to the fair and she was counting the cash she had with her, I said to her, Cedric, and she just responded with, don't count your tips in public, which is a complete throwaway line from Home Alone 2, and we were somehow able to remember that together. Also, when I did not do too well in an age test and she asked me how it went, I just said kerplunk, and she responded with kerplui, immediately knowing that I did not do very well on the test, which is just a line from the Rankin Bass movie Twas the Night Before Christmas, which is what we watch every Christmas Eve together as a family. And it's just one of those movies that makes me feel so contented and sated to know that we, have, we can watch it together every year. And it's also especially important to me because none of my friends have ever seen it, so it's more of a special bond that we can share. And finally, whenever she dropped me off anywhere when I was little, she would always say, okay, I'll be back to pick you up unless I forget or I don't feel like it. And I later found out that this is a similar line to something in Shrek 2, and this also goes to show what a great sense of humor she has. In this way, we can effortlessly quote and recall things is a really special relationship because I've done it so many times with my friends, and it's extremely awkward when I just get blank stares from them. In addition to this, my mother is also an extremely detail-oriented person. Every year, she creates these huge, incredibly detailed photo books using Shutterfly for the whole year and then the several trips we take in between. She dedicates hundreds of hours to these books that I know that we'll always have. And they're great because I know how much we would have forgotten if we didn't have these. And they're also great for settling arguments, like who sat next to who on a red eye coming home from Denver from our second out west trip. Unfortunately, I lost that and I've never heard the end of it from my little brother. She also has this huge D-ring binder that she has with all of the Christmas letters she's ever written, laminated and organized by year that I look back on sometimes. And also took all of me and my brother's artwork and organized them into a huge book that has titles and everything. And she always jokes that if she doesn't do this, she won't remember ever anything we've done as a family. And I know that when we're old and senile, we can still look back on these and remember everything we did as a family. And lastly, my mother is truly a Vermonter at heart. She grew up in Rutland, Vermont, and she's always taught me about being a Vermonter. So she took me to Hildene and the Coolidge Homestead and Tunbridge, Tunbridge World's Fair in Tunbridge, Vermont. And she also showed me the movie Man with a Plan starring Fred Tuttle, a Vermont dairy farmer turned politician. And I loved it so much that I wanted to be here for Halloween. And she got together all these old garments from like my grandfather and my great grandfather to let me be Fred Tuttle for Halloween. And also every year, or every other year, the two, just the two of us go to Tunbridge for the Tunbridge World's Fair. And I love this so much because it's just a tradition that the two of us share. And while we're there, we don't usually go on any rides, but last September, I convinced her to go on the Ferris wheel with me, which is a huge deal because she's terrified of heights. And it took a lot of convincing. I don't think she was very comfortable, but I had a lot of fun, and I think she did too in the end. And while we're there, she also teaches me a lot, like how all racehorses are considered to have the same birthday because her grandfather was a horse racer when she was little, and the great Vermont tradition of tractor pulling, which she also told me was very loud when it was the tractor pulling day of the Redland Fair. And while we're there, we just love looking at the big fruit and the alpaca stuffed animals and the just the animals they have and just being in Vermont. And I love that tradition that we share. And so I'd like to thank my mom for shaping me to be who I am, because we do share a lot of the same qualities. And she's just an incredibly strong, cool, awesome woman that I feel so lucky to have helped me grow up. And we really understand each other very well and have a great bond. So I thank my mom very much. And thank you for listening to my story. Larissa is next. 
Good evening, everyone. Will Smith once said, your life will become better by making other people's lives better. Four months into my exchange year, and I already know it would have been much more difficult if it wasn't for this one person. Portia Tipton, full of love, care, and patience, is who I've chosen to honor in tonight's tribute speech because of the positive impact that she's had on my exchange year so far. Coming here from a little island in the Middle East, all on my own to start an exchange year is definitely not easy and has been one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. But on my first day here, I remember coming here straight from the airport for my tour of Essex High School, and I recall meeting lots of different people. The person who really did, like, the person who really stood out to me though was the kind and friendly lady that I met at the, in the office at the back of the library, Portia Tipton. From the coziness of her room and the warmth in her tone, I automatically had a sense of familiar, uh, I automatically felt familiar with the area and felt extremely comfortable and knew I had a space to go to and someone to talk to if I ever felt like I needed it. She has also been, she has also played a major role in my support system here at Essex High School. A perfect example of that would be when we had another speech to do for this class and it was something that was extremely personal to me and I was very anxious and stressed about it. Portia was there for me the entire time from the very beginning from when I had to choose the topic of the speech and then even the outline, the first draft, the final draft, all the way up till my actual presentation date. I admit that I was scared that this speech would, bring, would resurface lots of negative thoughts and feelings that I had been avoiding for a while, but she made sure that she was there for me the entire time to reassure me and remind me that I could do it. Whether she knows it or not, she has definitely bettered my mental health throughout that time as well and made and helped me learn new coping mechanisms to, when it comes to how to deal with certain emotions and thoughts. She would check in with me in the mornings when I'd first walk into school and see her right there in front of me. She would check in with me during flex blocks whenever I'd go to see her. She'd check in with me when I'd walk past her in the hallways or after school at times or even during study hall blocks where I had nowhere else to go but felt like the nicest place to be was in her office at the back of the library. And re in relation to that speech, I remember the same evening of that presentation day, there was this dinner at a hotel with a bunch of other students that were part of the SJU community and other organizers from the global majority in this county. And I remember being so excited to go there and finally tell her how I did and she met me with the same enthusiasm and excitement at, that I came into that room with. And I remember her asking me how it went and how I felt I did. And she just seemed to care a lot about how the presentation went. And I remember her, and I remember her, excitement and intrigue also making me feel like my hard work did not go unrecognized and making me feel like it was all it was nothing was going unnoticed she made all that hard work seem so seem really worth it by the end and at that it was that same night that i got to know portia more as a person as well and not just things all things school related portia has become my mentor my role model my inspiration and my friend all in one she has definitely made an extremely positive impact on my life, and my admiration and respect for her cannot be put into words. She is admired and respected by many in the Essex community as well. It definitely is not just me, because of the positive impact she has on everyone else's lives too. She has shown me the type of person that I want to be once I, become, once I grow older, and that type of person is the person who makes a change in other people's lives. Thank you, Larissa. I have to put a plug for Larissa because she's an exchange student from Bahrain and guidance always likes to stick the exchange students in public speaking because there's not a lot of reading and I'm always like, oh, they have to be so brave to do this in a community they know no one and the language. So, super impressive. So next is Evan. Sorry, Evan, Trenton's not here. <laughs> My cat is not here. Hi. 
Hello. Today, I am here to talk about someone who's very important to me. Someone who has helped me through so much. And that someone is my mother. My mother is very, very special to me. Without her, I wouldn't be in the place that I am today, literally and figuratively. And I would just like to say some of the few things that I love so much about her. First, she's a very, very articulate planner. When it comes to our family trips that we, that we used to take all the time, she would always have a plan of how we're going to go about it. It'd be something as simple as, you know, hey, on the first day we're going to be staying at this hotel, to something a bit more complicated, like on the fifth day we will be going to this location at 5.30 p.m. Overall, while at the time I may have gotten a bit of a bit annoyed by that, in the fact that we couldn't do anything that, you know, like I just decided right in the moment, oh, mom, let's go look at that. At the same time, I think without that, that rigid formatting, we wouldn't, we would just been aimlessly wandering and it wouldn't have been nearly as fun of an experience. Secondly, this planning, it comes into our parties that we do. And this pairs very, very well with her amazing cooking. She, well, not just cooking, baking as well. She is an amazing cook and an even better bait, well, baker in my opinion. She likes to cook everything from carbonara to sourdough bread to cakes to recently really, really good cardamom knot tarts. But both this cooking and these trips require a bit of fuel to go with that. And uh, sadly, in order to do this, she must work a fairly stressful job. You see, my mom is a traveling nurse, which on top of the medical degree required to even become a traveling nurse, you also have to worry about contracts and the, the travel part, portion of it as well, and just the all around stress that comes with being a surgical nurse. Despite this, and despite the very, very long hours she has to work for this job, she still comes home with a cheery attitude and never lashes out despite the stress. While we may not see eye to eye 100% of the time, like for when it, her definition of clean and my definition of clean don't exactly line up, I still find that she is the best mother that I could ever possibly hope to ask for. And I am so grateful for her. And I am so proud that she continues to work her job despite how stressful it, sh it must be. Thank you all, and I hope you all have a wonderful night. And next we have Claire. There's a nurse theme tonight, by the way. <laughs> so hi, everyone. Um, thank you for coming tonight. So we have heard so many amazing stories about moms and dads, but I honestly could not choose between my mom or dad. So I decided to be my second mom, my aunt. My aunt is very special to me because she's one of the most generous, kind-hearted people I know and being with her is like second nature. I'm going to tell you about my amazing Auntie Barbie. So, my aunt is one of the most caring people I know. She cares for me with so much love, but she also cares for strangers with just the same amount of love. She's an ER nurse at Boston Medical Center, which is a hospital for, it's a safety net hospital in the city. She always puts in 110% of her effort into these people to make sure that, they're sure that they get back to health. However, even though she puts all of this time into the hospital, I know that she'll drop everything to spend time with me, or help me. One time in eighth grade, during our DC trip, my parents were smart enough to go to the Dominican Republic because both of their kids were not in town anymore. We both went to DC. So they decided to go to the Dominican Republic without us and their plane left the day before our bus left. So my aunt took time off work, 
She came all the way up to Vermont purely to just drive us five minutes down the road, put us on the bus with a smiling face, and that was the only reason why she came up. She does stuff like that. She did that just so I can feel safe and secure. I know that I can always go to her. My parents said when I was little, look for the helpers. My aunt is one of the helpers. She's always there for me. I know that I can go to her with medical problems, personal problems, just advice, anything. She said I can always go to her and I truly believe her. She has one of the biggest hearts I know. She does anything for everyone, all in her own time. She maintains a homeless closet at her hospital. People that come in that don't have clothes, don't have weather appropriate clothes, don't have clean clothes, they can go into the, the, into the closet and get whatever they need so they can just survive. And she maintains that on her own dime, on her own time. She goes on mission trips. She's gone to Ghana, she's gone to Haiti, Mexico, just to help people that don't have access to healthcare. She comes back and tells me these amazing stories about people that she's met and helped. And she also does amazing charity work. She makes, she raises money for everything. She raises money for people that don't have access to medical supplies, people that don't have access to any, I mean, she really kind of just does it all, and that's kind of why I love her so much. Now, while she does these extravagant and extraordinarily amazing things for everyone, she does the little things for me. I think that the little things are sometimes the most important. They mean the most to me. She's always the first one to call me on my birthday. She's always the first one to say, good luck on your first day of school every single year. She always talks to my mom in the night, and I always know that she'll have time to talk to me on the phone. Or I'll just say, Mom, tell her I say hi, and my aunt will always respond, hello, my love. With her doing all these little things, she really gains the title of my second mom. I don't really have all these amazing big moments with my aunt, but I have millions and millions of small little moments that make her my second mom. One of my favorite things to do with her is truly just talk to her. So if I end up anything like her, I know I have succeeded in life. Thank you. All right. Ready for another mom story? <laughs> All right. And next we have Cam. Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone in their life has someone to help and support them through every way in life. Since I moved in at the age of 14 with my dad and stepmom, Wendy has always been there to try and help and, and support me to the best of her ability. I just wanted to give my appreciations and talk about Wendy because I feel like she doesn't get enough credit for what she deserves for being such an amazing person to me and others. Back in eighth grade, I tried out for the basketball team for the third year in a row. And I got cut for the third year in a row, which I wasn't too, too surprised about because I was, and still am, very bad at it. But I went back home and I told Wendy about the news and she was, she was like, oh, that sucks, but you want to go try out wrestling this year? And I'm very thankful for that because I love the sport now. Um, Wendy is, will always help and support me and go to all my sporting events and support me and give me that extra motivation that I need to give it my all. Whenever she's out of wrestling me with for me, she'll be at Matt's side or in the stands taking photos or recording my matches so I can improve and get better after when I watch them. I'd say I'm pretty decent at sports, but on the other hand, school can be challenging for me sometimes. I've, not, I've never been the smartest student in the class, but back in sophomore year, I struggled a lot doing homework, and every night, Lindy would help me at the dinner table. Even when I tell her, I'd probably give up five times each assignment, and Lindy would just keep pestering me to keep going and try harder. My worst subject back, back then was bio, and she'd help me that with every night, and we'd do these weekly rab light ups, and she would help me with the writing part because that's one of my weakest areas, not knowing anything about what she was writing, she was just writing what I was telling her to write. And it was always about something random like ATP being made in the mitochondria. I'm not the only one she'll help out, she'll help out anyone. Wendy is the kind of person to help out someone with whatever they're going through, 
but I just know for me what she helps out and how she supports me. Back in sophomore year, I got this, I got a speeding ticket, and I got my license taken away for three months. And I went home and I told Wendy, and she wasn't too happy about it, but she had to bring me to school every day because I didn't have a car anymore, and she was probably late to work because of me. Or just like last week when I pull home and she's arriving, and she says, Cameron, you can't park on the road anymore. There's a park, winter parking ban. And I'm like, I'll be fine, whatever. So I go home, I go inside, leave my car on the road, and I go to bed, and I wake up, Wendy's banging on my door, Cameron, get up, your car's gone, just like I told you. I was like, no way. <laughs> so I go upstairs, I check for myself, so I'm in disbelief, and she, and then I was like, damn, she was right. Um, <laughs> so she's like, Tell, she says, get ready, um, I guess I'm gonna take you to school. And she was wait to, wait to work probably that day because of me. Um, this shows that she will just help out anyone, even if they don't deserve it, or believe what she's saying is always true. Um, she, will, she will always try her hardest to help out everyone, including me, and even if it takes a lot of patience to do so, I mean, it must take a lot of patience to work with crying babies and toddlers all day, every day. I can never do it, but she does. Um, but in the end, I just wanted to give my appreciations to Lindy for everything that she does for me and others, not always knowing how her kindness has affected me or others, because I know we don't say it. But you're important to this family because you always put the family first and make sure everyone's happy and okay and make sure the family will make it through the week. You've affected my life in a lot of ways, but most importantly, just helping me through the harsh life lessons that I've had to endure, and most importantly, just how to be a good person to everyone. So thank you. Thank you, Cameron. So Maddie's not here, Connor, so you are next. Good evening, everyone. Um, Today I'm gonna to talk to you about my uh, buddy Hunter. He's the one on the left up there. I'm the person on the right, if you couldn't tell. Um, could you imagine waking up at 1.30 in the morning just to drive to a field and go sit in a tree stand for eight hours, and then if you're lucky, work into the night dragging a 150 pound deer out of that field? Many people don't think that's very fun. He's always willing to do that with me no matter what time it is. Hunter has many important qualities that I look for in a friend. He's always, you know, he's always honest with me, he's always very nice, and then he's up for doing whatever I want to do. Um, me and Hunter met through some mutual friends, and the first time that we actually did something together, we was ice fishing. And so we, one morning we decided to wake up early and go ice fishing. So that's what we did, and when we got to the spot, we realized that there was ice shanties everywhere on the uh, bay that we were in. And so the one thing that we could figure out to get away from everyone else was to go towards the open water to get away from everyone else. So that's what we did. We got about 50 yards away from the open water when the ice started to crack beneath us and we knew that, that was far enough to go. We drilled holes right there and it was probably only an hour after that we were walking out with two five gallon buckets full of perch. I'm very glad I stayed and did that because on our way out, many people were telling us that we were crazy and then when we got back to the cars, we barely made it before we started laughing. Everybody was telling us that we were crazy for doing that and I knew that, you know, it was just another thing to catch fish, and he knew that it was another thing to, that we need to do to catch fish. Hunter likes fishing so much that it's actually his job to do it. He works for a charter boat called Sure Strike Charters in the summertime. They usually fish for salmon and lake trout on uh, Lake Champlain. He does multiple charters a day, and he usually works six days a week in the summers. When the charter boat goes away for the winter, um, he's out every weekend from sunup to sundown fishing for perch, crappie, and panfish. Once he's done fishing for the day, he goes down to Ray's Seafood and uh, sells them there. So that means that if you've ever eaten at uh, Ray's in Essex or Ray's in Burlington and ordered the uh, lake perch, uh, you might have eaten a fish that he caught. Um, Hunter also likes hunting a lot. That was actually his first spring turkey, and uh, we hunted a lot during the spring. We hunted very hard, too. We hunted through the first week very um, hard, and I actually I was successful on the first day but he was starting to get a little bit discouraged after the first kind of 10 days of hunting that he hadn't shot a bird yet. 
So one night I got a call saying that he had roosted a bird and that he wanted me to come call for him in the morning. So I packed my gear up and prepared for the 2 a.m. wake up call. That came very quickly the next morning. The drive down wasn't much better. When I got there, um, it was a little bit later than we were hoping for and we got set up about half an hour before shooting light and we just waited. We heard some turkeys gobbling further down the woods, kind of thinking that the turkey had moved its way out of the field and a little bit further down than we were expecting. So I was starting to get a little bit worried. And all of a sudden, this turkey gobbled probably 80 yards away. It scared me. I know it scared him too, because I watched him jump. Once, this, uh, once, this, once it got a little bit lighter out, and the turkey kind of flew out of the tree a little bit, or he flew out of the tree. He was sitting in the field. I actually was lucky enough, I called him right to the decoys and he came running. When he saw the decoys, he came running. This turkey made it to about 17 yards away from us when all of a sudden I heard bang. And uh, I was expecting to look up and see this turkey dead in the field. Instead I saw it flying straight up into the air. This turkey luckily went right down to where it took off from and I heard another shot ring out and that time he didn't miss. Um, me and Hunter went from being from complete strangers to really good friends in about half a year. I can't say that about anybody else except for him. We just click when we're together. We always get along, we've never fought, and we always have some success when we go and do stuff. I cherish the memories that we've made together because um, when I got my driver's license, it was just kind of, I was always out by myself, and then it was kind of nice to find somebody else who had the same passion about hunting that I did. I'm very lucky to have somebody who is willing to do the same amount of stuff I am for the reward and who knows, the, uh, who knows how, you know, just how much it takes to actually be successful. Thank you. Miss Frisbee decided to save the best for last. <laughs> uh, good evening, everyone. First, I'd like to talk about the title of my speech. I titled my speech Wuxi, and if you don't speak Mandarin, you won't know what I'm talking about. Wuxi means warrior in Chinese, and it's a little tribute instead of a tribute. It's one of my mom's favorite movies, Move On. And although she may not be a 6th century warrior, she's pretty darn close. Everybody has memories from their childhood that weren't funny at the time, but are probably funny now. And one that stuck with me is when me and my sister, we were going to bed, and I was about 5, and she was 3, and we really wanted marshmallows before we went to bed. So we snuck down to the kitchen and grabbed some marshmallows, and we decided to roast them on our nightlight. About five minutes later, the burning smell caught the attention of her mom, and she busted us. Despite having to deal with two crazy kids, well, three now, my mom, Jen, has been the bravest, most determined, and helpful person I know. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about her private practice, getting us through rough times, and being my ultimate support for the college application process. Starting your own private practice is no easy feat especially as a nurse practitioner. There are many legal documents you have to sign and it's a pretty strenuous process. Um, she wanted to start her private practice in 2018 and she finally achieved it in 2020. And then when she achieved it, along came COVID and it totally modified her business plan. She turned her bedroom into her office and she had to work full time from home, which meant she had to deal with us a lot more. That whole process took countless days of planning and adjusting to COVID, and now she's enjoying her private practice much more than working at a hospital. However, getting to that stage wasn't easy. Through being fired, drug addiction, and balancing school, kids, and work, she made it happen. As a first-generation college student, she accidentally unenrolled from UVM her first year and decided to work at IBM. And in that time frame, she got pregnant with me. And in late 2004, she got laid off from IBM and decided to re-enroll at UVM in their nursing program. She was very busy, and she had a color-coded planner with sections dedicated to my sister, school, work, and myself. 
Even through all the busyness, there was never a day I felt my mom wasn't in my life. She dedicated all of her off time to us and would bring us to parks like Oak Ridge and Battery Street, attended all my little league games. And my favorite is she was taken us out of school to go eat lunch. And on top of doing all that, my dad had a serious drug addiction that forced him to be out of the picture. Because she persevered through those rough times, she's shown me what it's mean to be determined. Right now, she's helped me through the college application process. From the lengthy FAFSA to flying out to San Diego, she supported me no matter what. She's also my number one fan in the stands all year round and always screaming her head off. If you've ever been to one of my football games and wondered who was screaming bloody murder in the stands, it was probably my mom. I hope I continue my career in football in college so me and my mom can win some more games. Because she's persevered through tough times, became a proud businesswoman, and gave us childhood memories that anyone could hope for, I'd like to thank her for all that she's done, and I recognize how you got there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I hope you are as impressed as I have been this semester. This has been a fabulous group of students, um, such diverse topics, and just such enthusiasm. I, I never had such an enthusiastic class, um, mainly about charades, but also about public speaking occasionally, too. Um, but it's been very fun to hang out with them for a semester. So thank you so much for sharing them with me. And I hope you have a nice evening. If you want to send this to somebody tomorrow, I will email you a link to the recording. So if you want to share it. All right. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.